I like keyboards. You guys like watching keyboard videos. Let's make another keyboard video. Today we'll be building the Mons Geek M2, which is a 96% layout keyboard, or 1800 compact. The PCB has south-facing LEDs and supports QMK firmware, which means you can remap keys cross-platform using VIA. It comes in three cool colors, and at just under $116, I would say that this is definitely worth your money. And unlike the Zoom TKL, it's currently in stock. If you're just getting into keyboards and or modding, I highly recommend the Mods Geek M2 because it comes with tools for some of the most popular mods, like tape for the tape mod and pads for the force break mod, which I'll be trying for the first time ever in this video. So let's get started. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and take the sleeve off first and then Whoever designed boxes like this must have done it specifically to annoy me because this is the only time I've ever opened one of these boxes without destroying it. The first really cool thing about this keyboard is that it comes with basically a giant sheet of tape. I'm assuming this is intended for the tape mod, which is basically where you put painter's tape or some equivalent on the back of your PCB. I've done this for a few of the keyboards I've made already and I can speak to its efficacy and it generally makes your keyboard sound a bit more poppy. You've got a coiled cable here which is nice, nothing really too crazy to write home about. The next thing we have here is the stabilizers. We, we will be using these stabilizers, but don't worry too much because they're actually very good after you lube them. You've also got all the screws that we'll need, some spare gaskets. Next to these little sticky pads here, these are to perform what is called the force break mod, which is used to reduce metal on metal contact when you're typing, which will greatly improve sound. I'll go over how to apply these, so don't worry too much. Lastly, we have the keyboard itself, which comes with a plastic cover, which is kind of goaded because it you know, can protect the keyboard and I wish more manufacturers would do this. The keyboard itself is purple and the video doesn't do it a lot of justice, but it looks so great. Like the purple is very rich. And I'm not sure if that plate is polycarbonate or FR4, but let's move on. So the first thing we have to do here is unscrew the case. There are 10 screws in total, and unfortunately in the last video I lost my electric screwdriver, so I'm going to have to do this by hand. I know, I know, I'm so brave, but don't worry guys, I do make it all the way to the end. Yep. Pulling the case apart very carefully, and then also very carefully, disconnect the daughter board from the PCB. And inside the case we have whatever this white sheet here is, and then we have a couple layers of foam, and you know me, I love me some foam. And if you don't know me, well, uh, hi, my name is Sammy Q, and I hope you're enjoying the video. Let's set this foam aside for now, and then we have to unscrew the PCB from the plate, again by hand. This is at 1,000% uh, speed, by the way. We've got a couple more layers of foam here, and I do not believe it would be out of line for me to say that that is very poggers. Let's keep taking the whole thing apart. We'll leave as much of it together as we can, but we do have to take it apart to put on the stabs. Last thing is these little metal things, I think their weights are removable. I'm not sure why you would remove them because then your PCB is just kind of exposed to the elements. Next up, we're gonna perform the force break mod using the included strips. You wanna line these up over the screw holes as so, and this is gonna prevent metal on metal contact. You wanna do this on both sides, so let's go ahead and do that with a little bit of magic. And that's the force break mod. I've already gone over how to lube stabs in another video, but as a quick refresher, you want to lube both sides of the stem without lubing the cross itself. And then you want to lube the inner part of the housing with just enough so that if your stab is clear like these ones are, it's slightly less clear than before. Next up for the wire, I'm going to use Crytox 205 grade zero, yep. and I'm going to put a generous coating on the long parts of the wire and a little bit just around the corners as well. Next, I'm going to put it all together making sure that everything's going the right way, and this is what it should look like when you're done. Next, we'll go ahead and attach them to the board. First, we have to clip them in, and then we have to screw them in from the back. I'm not sure how or why, but I actually had one stabilizer left over. Let's go ahead and put on some switches with magic as is tradition on the Sammy Q channel. These are Akko V3 cream blue switches, and this is actually the first time I've built a keyboard with tactile switches as opposed to linears. I like how these feel. These are actually pretty close to linear switches, but you can definitely feel the bump. I wanted to try something new, and I got the idea to use these switches from YouTuber Poongi, or Poongi, maybe? 
I really hope I said that right and I didn't just say something wildly offensive by mistake. <laughs> Please check her out, her link will be in the description. Before we put it back together, if you want to do the tape mod, this is the time to do it. You might want to cut it up in the strips, but at the very least you will need to cut a hole for the daughterboard connector. It is very easy to apply and remove. I ultimately decided not to go with the tape mod because it took up more space than I thought it would, yep. so I just put it back on the sticky paper and it didn't lose any of its adhesive. Next let's put the foam in and very carefully reattach the daughterboard. And then we'll put the top part of the case on and then we'll screw the whole thing together. This was very tedious without an electric screwdriver. And there we go. It is very important that you press your keys like this for reasons that I cannot come up with a punchline for. You'll just have to trust me. Can't have a keyboard without key yep. caps. And for this build, I am choosing the Akko World Tour Tokyo. These are cherry profile die sub PBT keycaps, but they come in OEM and ASA as well. They come with this wire keycap puller and here is my genuine reaction to seeing it. Oh, that's fucking cute. That is... <laughs> Rawr. Yes, I know. Very cringe. Yep. These keycaps are absolutely gorgeous. Just the designs on them are very intricate and stunning. And they come with so many of these adorable novel keys. The bottom row got a little mixed up in shipping, so let me just go ahead and fix that. And again, I can't stress how beautiful these are. So let's go ahead and put them on with a little bit of magic. And this is quite possibly a candidate for most beautiful keyboard I've ever built. I really like how the pink and the white complement each other and accent the purple board very well. And then you've got that hint of that light blue, which really just brings the whole thing together. As I mentioned before, this keyboard has custom firmware and is compatible with VIA, which means you can remap any key on a hardware level. But it also has Epic Gamer RGB. And the RGB looks very, very good. And as we all know, it is a scientific fact that the more RGB you have, the better you will perform in game. So really quick before the sound test, I want to just give my final thoughts on the build here. I, like I said, I legitimately think this is one of the most beautiful keyboards I've ever built. I really like it. I really like how the switches feel. I really like how it sounds. You'll hear for yourself in the sound test that's coming up. It might be a little bit before I make another keyboard video because my tripod broke while I was filming this. Yep. Um, so that kind of sucks. I typically name my keyboards. I don't have a name for this one yet or the last one actually. So if you want to leave some name suggestions in the comments, I will pick one and I will announce it in the next video. But really quick before we get into the sound test, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment about what you think of the build. Let me know if you agree if this is a beautiful keyboard or not. If you disagree, I may have to fight you, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I won't waste any more of your time. Let's get into that sound test.